shots and try the shots in one of these. Thank you. So I'm going to remove the blade that we had on there from earlier. So I have my sharp container right here. Is that little part so they don't breathe out of their nose? The little pink thing? We'll get to that. So I'm going to remove the, the blade off the bio Parker. When you're removing the blade, you want to make sure you're always facing it down. That way if it comes out, it doesn't go flying across the room, especially when you're, you're going to be doing this practicing at the table. You don't want to send it shooting out of your classmates, okay? So when you load it, you want that angle facing you. When you take it apart and you remove it, you want that angle facing down, okay? So I'm going to face down. I'm going to get a grip on it with, I have the needle holder. You're going to pull down and push away, see what can happen, and it came out. Okay? Now, if that happens, obviously, you never pick it up with your fingers. I'm going to use the needle holder and write in. Okay? Now, when you're loading it on, again, it has the end that this is closed. It has the flat where it's open. I'm going to open this and that's sterile. I'm going to drop it onto my tray. I'm going to take my needle holder or hemostat. I'm going to pick it up. When you pick it up, you want to make sure that you're holding it free of that window or that slot. That way we can load it on. Okay? The bar parker, you want to make sure you're having it facing you. So I can see that angle. I'm going to face down. I'm going to go into that slot and click. You can hear it click right in. Okay, so I know it's secure. You want to make sure when it's on your tray that it's always in a safe position. Okay, and these, I just realized that should be. So, we are going to be extracting tooth number 14. So, patient's pre-op vital signs were taken. He's now going to have 100% oxygen on his nose. They will sometimes use nitrous oxide also. Thank you. We'll talk about that in um, dental science. The oxygen tank is here. Oxygen tank is always green, so he's getting 100% oxygen. If he was to get nitrous, um, nitrous oxide tank is always blue, okay? They will often put something over the patient's eyes to cover their eyes and keep them safe so that nothing will go into their eyes. And again, he's being delivered 100% oxygen through his nose. Now, if this patient's going under anesthesia, he's going to need a throat cap because we want to make sure that if the tooth or something slipped out of the forceps that he doesn't aspirate anything, okay? If he were conscious during this extraction and something started to slip, he could use his tongue and help us to get it. But if that patient's asleep, it could go all the way back, okay? So we're gonna put a four by four or a larger piece of gauze. This one has the handle so it could be pulled out so that we can put that, it's called a throat back in, okay? So he is starting to get sleepy, so before he gets too sleepy on us, I'm gonna ask for the bite block. You learned about this yesterday in EFDA labs called a mouth prop. They come in child size, small adult, large adult. The side of the writing is gonna go on the cheek, the narrower end is gonna go further in the mouth and the wider part to the buckle. If we're gonna work on the left, that means I'm gonna put the bite block on the right. Okay, and then I'm going to ask for a throat cap, please. Thank you. I'm going to put that in so that if anything comes loose, that patient is not going to swallow it. Okay, and then I will take the uh, scalpel and blade. I want to come around here so you can see. So I'm going to take the scalpel, and if you could pass um, a tray assistant the um, the factor, please. So 
so I'm going to make an incision. I'll take the periosteum elevator, need number two. So now I'm going to remove that periosteum from the bone. I think the light might mess up. So I'm using that periosteal elevator to move that periosteum away from the bone. Now she's going to pass me the um, straight elevator. And I'm going to put some pressure on that tooth to help loosen the tooth from the socket. And then she's going to pass me the universal maxillary forceps. I'm going to put a forceps on there. Now with the forceps on, they're going to rock buckle to lingual. And then twist to get that tooth out. As Mrs. Yeomans is taking everything back, she's wiping it off. That root, the tooth, she's going to double check the root and show me so I can show that the root tips are intact. And then I'm going to ask her a Tourette to help clean out and debride that socket. And Mr. Santos is getting all the stuff that's coming out of there, so it could be like an abscess, any fragments of tooth or bone, anything I'm going to get that ice of tea, and then I'm going to ask the irrigation. <laughs> Thank you. And I'm going to irrigate that socket. And I'm going to ask for the bone file, please. There's a little bit of roughness on that alveolus, so we're going to smooth out that alveolus. And then I need a hemostat, please. Some fragments of tissue we're going to get out of there. And I'm going to, she's going to grab those for me, or I can just send them up the suction. Good, and I'll put the irrigation again for you. So we're going to irrigate, and then we're going to get ready to close. So now we're going to get the suture ready, okay? For the irrigation, if we are doing a sterile procedure, you would irrigate with sterile water or anesthetic solution. If you are just doing a regular procedure, you can use tap water. These syringes, these syringes, you need to have them pressed all the way in, and you slowly pull back with them in the liquid. And you should always have two of them ready to go. That way, if one runs out, you have another for backup. Okay? So, Mrs. Yeomans is loading up a silk suture. So, is it resorbable or non resorbable? Non resorbable. Non resorbable. And she's going to load that so we can suture on the maxillary left, buckle to lingual. Okay? Thank you. So she passes it, holding the suture on the left, and then I would go in, I would steal this retractor, and we would go in and retract, and I would start suturing buccal to lingual. Okay? We don't want to pierce and chew up this tissue, so we're going to do the suturing here. So I'm going to ask for a pickup, please. Right, and then we're going to ask for the scissors, <coughs> and we're going to cut. I think it came out. It was there like that. Mm -hmm. And she's going to take that fragment. So the pickup will help hold the tissue together.
good. Maybe it was easy. This is Yeoman. That's because she was not cooperating. Okay, we're going to cut. So you want to try and cut as close to the... Oh, we don't leave a whole lot to irritate that patient's tissue. So we're going to put four sutures in there for you to remove. <coughs> You'll practice ahead of time. When you do it this day, this will be your performance exam, okay, when you remove the four sutures. Some of the guys that were doing this kind of already in not great shape. Hmm? Now we have some of them that the gym is already not in great shape. Oh, some of those. Yeah, you know we have some that aren't. I'm just wondering if this wood would have ruined them. Okay, so our sutures are in, so now she's going to pass me two two by two, fold it in half, and then half again. Thank you. <coughs> I'm going to take the throat pack out, take that gauze out, and we're going to have him bite down, okay? At this point, he's going to be a little woozy. We're going to wake him up, and two of us are going to remove move him to the recovery room. At that point, he should not be left alone, so one of us would stay, one of us would go get his ride or chaperone, and bring them to sit with him in the recovery area, okay? He was dirty on the outside of his face, we would wet one of our 4 by 4s and we'd clean him up, okay? We don't want him walking around with bloody nose, okay? Now, the field assistant is going to get the uh, suture removal. She's going to hold the knot, so she has the pickup from 10 grafts, and she's going to hold the knot, and we have a 2x2, two two. so she can put those right on the 2x2 two two so we can make sure that whatever went in comes out.
do that like mm -hmm. video.